I have two objects where one will jump twice as high as the other. But what should you do if you want to exchange information between two Unity game objects without creating a situation where one object relies too much on the other? Where if I delete one of these objects, the game will still run without throwing one of these errors. We can solve this using a scriptable object, where instead of having the data on the object itself, the data is stored outside of the scene as an asset and shared with both objects. Doing this will keep the data all in one place and reflect changes when we create changes to the asset. And since we have this asset outside of the scene, this will be the same for other scenes as well. Other scenes can use the same asset and utilize the same data. So let's jump in. Each of my objects has a cube A and cube B script that inherits from a cube jump mono behavior. My cube B script is currently using a cube A reference and getting its force to determine its own force with a modifier. My cube jump script is a mono behavior that can be applied to an object, and this is what this code looks like. But now let's change the cube B script so that we're not using this reference. I'm going to create a new script called cube jump data. In this script, I use create asset menu so that later we can create instances of this scriptable object. I have it inherit from scriptable object instead of mono behavior and define two different fields, force and acceleration. To use this new scriptable object, I'm going to change my reference from cube A to cube jump data and in my start jump function, get force from jump data instead. In my cube A script, Instead of setting force directly, we'll use the same scriptable object to get the force in acceleration. Then we'll call the start jump function with jump data.getForce instead. Since we're not using this get force anymore, I'm going to remove it. Back in the editor to create an instance of this cube jump data, we right click, create, custom, cube jump data, which creates an instance of the scriptable object. This asset here is the same asset that will be shared on the game objects. We see in the inspector it has the force and acceleration. Select each of our objects and drag the instance into the jump data. Once this is done for both objects, save the scene. And you can see now we have the same functionality as before. But now if we delete one of them and play the scene again, we don't get the same issue null reference exception as before. One last adjustment. Since both of our cubes are referencing the same cube jump script, we're going to remove this reference of cube jump data from both scripts and instead add it to the cube jump script. Set this to protected so that any classes inheriting from it can access it. And to make sure we're using the acceleration from jump data, we're going to set that in start jump using this line here. Now all of our data is in one place where we can set the force in real time while the game is running to see the different effects. And by keeping data all in the same place, we make our code smaller and easier to understand. The last thing to remember about scriptable objects is that these values will not reset when exiting play view. So keep that in mind when making changes to this asset. If you're in a situation where you don't want to lose the original values, you can always create a new instance to try out the new values and change the data here in this new instance and use this new jump data asset instead. And there you go.